registration. Sorry it'd be a few minutes late, but we had to organize the running order of the different dogs because we have several different dogs running at different heights. And we want to be able to be organized and changing the height of the different obstacles you'll see out here. My name is Carol Ely. I represent K-19 Training, which is representing this pole agility demonstration as a free ability for the handlers to get some practice. We call it kind of a fun match. In a fun match, the handlers can actually take toys and treats out with them. In a true agility trial, they are not allowed to do so. No toys, no treats. So that's why it's a little more fun. <laughs> now, in a real trial, you'd have a similar setup as what you see here. What this is would be called as a standard course. I'll explain a little bit about the equipment before we start, and then throughout the runs of everybody's runs, I will explain different obstacles. But um, to start out with, I do want to mention that I teach the uh, home obedience and agility through John Logan College so that you uh, can find more information online or on their catalog. We also have some flyers over at that white tent to your far right. There's also, um, I don't know that I have, I don't have any information out right now. We had them here yesterday, but our local dog club, Crab Orchard Kennel Club. They have a dog show every August. So you might be interested in more information. You can always email me. I do have some business cards over there. You can always email me with any other questions. Now, we have um, uh, just a little history. I'll just give you an update on agility, and then we'll get started. Agility was started in England in 1978, so it's been around for a long time. When it was brought over here, it wasn't AKC right off, but as AKC did begin to uh, start this up, they created specifications for the equipment. What you see out here is AKC standards. This is would be allowed in a trial. You do have to have items in a safe way. So if you should decide to go home, you get enthused with the agility and go, oh, I want to start doing this, I'm going to go jump my dog, there's some safety things we have to discuss. One thing is your dog might enjoy jumping to the back of a couch or over fences, but that's not repetitive. You don't want to do repetitive jumping, especially at the wrong height. Dogs are measured at the shoulder height. So the dogs you'll be seeing today will be, measured, will be running at their measured height or a little below, depending upon situation. Another safety concern is the age of the dog. If you have a young dog, dog should be not jumping, should not be jumping full height until a, a little after one and a half years old. If it's a large breed, if it's a small breed, they can start a little earlier. The whole thing is that we need the uh, bones to finish growing. Now, uh, let's see. I just have a couple of things. I got to buzz through here on here. We've got. Um, Handlers of all si all ages, <laughs> sorry, all ages are um, able to do agility. Even if you want to get into the tournament competition, there's from the senior to the junior. We will have a junior here today, and you consider me and maybe I don't know, I'm probably the oldest one here, but there's seniors that do it of all ages. It's fun. We have exercise. The dog enjoys it, and you create a bond with them. It's available for both the pedigree and mixed breed, so it does not matter anymore. AKC used to be pedigree only, but now it can be either one mixed breed or pedigree. Let's just flip the page, sorry. I'm trying to stay with this because yesterday I didn't stay with my notes and I forgot a lot. So, <laughs> All right, I will start out, though, with an explanation that you will see out here that there is two separate courses. One is a novice course, and one is more of an advanced type course. The yellow cones that you see are the novice, and what they'll be doing is a little bit different course because they're going to be guided into the six leaf holes that are behind me. The advanced dogs will be doing the 12 leaf holes. So you'll have some idea which dogs are more experienced. Now, that's not to say they haven't been worked with the training, but it's what the handler would like to try and do. Now, understand, these dogs are not used to, a, lot, a few of them are not used to working in an environment where there's public and distractions. So if a dog leaves the handler and runs to the line, especially if they see dogs along the edge, just ignore them, don't talk to them, please don't try to pet or anything else, because that would only encourage a dog to do it again another time. 
and we are training while we're out here where everybody's trying to train their dog so that they can go into trialing. So we're going to work with that. So you're going to see people stop, and if the dog didn't do an obstacle right, they're going to correct it. Some will, some won't. It depends upon the dog, the situation. What you'll commonly see is that as dogs are coming to the contact equipment, contact equipment has yellow on both sides. The A-frame, which is out there, and I know you're in a minute, you're not going to be able to hear me too well. The A-frame to your left is that large obstacle. It's got yellow on both sides. The dog has to get a foot in the yellow. Can you hear me at all? Okay. Have to get a foot in the yellow or the judge will disqualify for that obstacle. The same thing goes with the dog walk, which is this large one directly behind me. It's got yellow on both sides. The only obstacle that requires yellow both on the up and the down in the new rules is the teeter. It's a safety precaution. So the dog must put at least one foot in the yellow down there and a yellow here. <laughs> Additionally, we try to make sure the dog drops the board to the ground first before exiting as another safety rule. Okay, I will explain more as they go. I'm going to count now for the table. I'll explain that in a minute. Five and four and three and two and one. Go. The judge would normally do a five-second count on the table, and the dog is not to leave the table until they hear that go. The handler can release the dog whenever they want. Good job. Very nice. So on the table, as I was mentioning, it's another yellow contact equipment. Normally the height of the table would change along with the height that you see is changing. The 24-inch dog really would have had a height probably close to this. But to save time for the demonstration and the public here out downtime, we're going to have the table maintain this height through all of the course, all the different heights of dogs. Now, even the little eight-inch dogs, man, they would be almost to the floor, to the ground. So when you see the little dogs run and they have to hop up there, it's a bit of an effort. But we're only doing it for a short time during this course. And there you see she's doing the A-frame. The dog did hit the yellow. And that also could be a running contact. Some handlers will let their dog run the contact all the way down. Five and four and three and two and one, go. But if you do a run in contact, you got to make sure you're going to be as fast or faster than your dog so you can direct them to the next obstacle. Now what she's doing is she's working to get the dog to do the correct entry and to continue weaving. The correct entry on the weave poles is the dog using their left shoulder between pole one and two and then they are to continue on weaving each pole until they're done. There's even been competitions that would have a double weave pole 48, I forgot how many poles, but they double up the poles just to see who can get their dog to weave the most. Now the weave poles are one of the hardest of obstacles. We usually end up training that to completion after the dogs accomplish most of the other equipment. It's also very stressful on the dog's body, so we don't want to start that. Good job. And we don't want to start that when they're too young, which we have here. The earlier dog, I should have mentioned, used to jump 24, but because it was retired, or it, close to retirement, she's dropped it down to the lower height, which can be done as what's called preferred. Yeah, you need to go by there. Kind of nice to be able to still jump them once they get in their senior years and not have it be as stressful, so we usually go into a lower height that is allowed. Now there she got a nice contact. It's really hard to get the weave poles. That's about the last thing that they master. So it, it's... There we go. All right. There you see the stop for safety purposes. We'll be changing the heights again. We'll also drop it down to eight inches and we'll have some very small dogs running. If we have heights all the way to four inches. So even the tiniest little dog, it can be a two pound dog, can actually run agility. You'll also see something as large as a Great Dane. 
So it doesn't matter what size a dog is, it can run. I want to explain a little bit about the shoe. As you notice, the head makes it a little bit scary for the dog to go through since they can't see an opening. So it does take a little bit of training with that one. That's one of the unusual obstacles you'll see in a court. Second try on those weave poles. This is an unnatural thing for a dog to weave back and forth in poles, so it takes a while for them to figure this one out. Uh, agility obstacles are to be taken very quickly in the required direction. Now, when you watch those handlers out here, pay attention, you'll see different handling styles. We do front crosses, rear crosses, pivots, and many variations in between. The dog is watching our whole body. There'll be times that your feet are informing it, your shoulders, and your hand, and your voice. This is a lot of information. Sometimes you have to pick and choose because the handler has got it right. So when we blame what happened that a dog didn't get something, it's 95 to 98% handler error, not dog. Because the dog knows, you just gotta kill them. So we need to learn their language most times, because if you realize dogs do communicate by body language, so they're experts at reading. We need to get that communication going, so that's something that we practice with. It's been used that way. Nice two on two off there. Like that stop.